Howdy folks, welcome back to the Black Sheep Meadow Homestead. I'm Brent. I'm Amber. We got a good one for you today. <laughs> of course we do. So we are in the middle of our harvest and we're like, we're coming in right at a 90 to 120 days on a lot of our garden. A lot of our stuff is. So uh, we've been harvesting quite a bit. We've got, uh, I think we've harvested well over 50 pounds of fresh green beans. Oh yeah, it's a, a lot of green beans. And then you're into, I think you canned, I've pressure can canned. I've canned a little over 50 pints of uh, of green beans mm -hmm. and I'm done canning green beans for the year so that's enough to get us through till next year so everything else that comes out of there will be eaten fresh given away stuff like that mm -hmm. so so we've done uh, some of our potato harvest already and I think we're gonna finish mm -hmm. off a lot of our potatoes that are in the mound today mm -hmm. and then we're also gonna do our experimental potatoes for y'all where we did three pounds of cut potatoes and three pounds of whole potatoes and we're trying to see what uh, whether their cut or whole produces better or worse well, yeah what yield um, is better because there's that whole argument over you cut them and you get more plants so you'll have higher yield, yield but a lot of times it's smaller potatoes so we're gonna see we're yep. gonna see what our little experiment does we're also gonna harvest the last of the cabbage i think there's three or four heads of cabbage three, over uh, there. three heads of cabbage over there and you're gonna do sauerkraut with i'm gonna that, turn correct? that into sauerkraut so i'm gonna and be busy in the kitchen today i'm gonna finish off what is left of our sweet corn so a lot of our garden you know we do samples you know over about a 30-day period as it starts to become uh, viable for harvest um, but our sweet corn you know we're gonna try and do something different next year we've done a bodacious sweet corn every year for the past seven years I guess yes and some years we have a good harvest some years we don't um, it's a very susceptible to bugs pest. and parasites yeah. and our parasites pest yes um, so it's a very hard sweet corn to grow but if you can get it to grow it is delicious it is yeah, the best uh, sweet corn we've ever tasted but ever. it just it's not working in our climate in our in our zone so well we just we don't want to spray a bunch of chemicals on our fruits and vegetables, vegetables. so we're trying not to and mm -hmm. with this sweet corn variety being so susceptible i think the only way you could get it to be successful is if you over chemical Correct. over treated it i guess yep. is the right way to say it if you over treated so, it you could but get it's it. there's probably a different growing zone or a different climate that this corn prefers over what we have so right. now we have a cherry dent corn which is still <laughs> probably about 30 days away and some of this corn is well it's it's starting to touch the 10 foot mark it's well say, over nine foot tall it's, um, it's it's like that children of the corn movie like yeah, it's so crazy <laughs> there's some stocks that have like i counted one stock that had four ears of corn on it earlier and they were all healthy so yeah it's doing um, really good and that's all going to get turned into um, we'll do some cornmeal with it for us but a lot of it's going to be chicken food a lot of it's going to be yeah. chicken food or a supplement for the chickens so i'll get all that done today but our main goal here is is we are going to do our, our pull our potatoes mm -hmm that we cut yep cut versus whole so and we'll probably see you wanted to talk to him a little bit about the squash correct so our squash too um i think we have probably well over 30 squash plants in our, oh, our yeah. raised bed or uh, our huga culture mound mm -hmm. or different experiments that we've done with it this year and you know we're, we're well over 100 days on all of our squash already and we have not lost a single plant we haven't lost a single plant the squash vine borers have plagued us in the past and i think we got that there's two things i can contribute to uh, evading the squash vine borers this mm -hmm. year. One is the spraying of the BT, which is a natural organic bacteria that we're spraying on the plant. And then the companion planting with marigolds. Yes, I have planted sporadic marigolds throughout the entire garden everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I plan to do that again constantly. I've just, I like, I've, well, one, they're pretty. Mm -hmm. Two, it helps bring in the pollinators. Mm -hmm. Three, it is a natural pest repellent. Mm -hmm. And I think it has really um, improved. And for as little as marigolds, uh, they're relatively inexpensive mm -hmm. and they're pretty hardy plants. So they're doing really well. So they seem like a good bang for the buck as far as a companion planting. The other thing, the BT, if you don't have BT in your garden shed, you are missing out. It because works for the worms. It definitely works for the worms. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that it doesn't kill a lot of your beneficial stuff. Correct. And but that being said, BT is not. Um, so in other words, BT is not going to take care of what the scientific world is going to consider an actual bug. They are primarily on. Uh, I forget the name of them. But worms is what they're after. Worms. But it works so, wonderful. I love it. 
So let's get to harvesting some potatoes. Let's harvest potatoes. All right, so we're at our raised bed. I think this is a 250 gallon container. This was a tree container. It was a tree container. It's so doing really well. You can see we put a board right across. I don't know if y'all remember this when we did our original potato video. I'll link that video here. But we put the board right across and we put three pounds of cut potatoes on one side and three pounds of whole potatoes on this side. Now, the cut potatoes obviously took up almost twice the real estate as what the whole potatoes did. I can tell you early on, the whole potatoes had better, healthier looking plants on top. Yes. And uh, I think we're in right at 110 days now, I believe, with these uh, mm -hmm. potatoes being in, in here. And, and they're not necessarily like dead, like you had to harvest them. But, but we this, need to. This There's is the natural of cycle of a potato. Yeah. The top, the greens will start to, to fall back and die off as the potato becomes mature and ready to harvest. Mm -hmm. So we're going to harvest these. We're going to keep these potatoes in one bucket to weigh and those potatoes in another bucket to weigh. And as soon as we get them all harvested, we'll figure out what produced more. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at the quality of the potato too, size-wise. Yep. So we're going to harvest. Give us this, just a second. We'll be right back. All right, so we got the potatoes up. We got them done. We got them weighed. It is sure nice having them in this raised bed. Yes, you're not bending down as bad. It's, not hurting, but... <laughs> it's definitely nice. But our for our results, the whole potatoes that were not cut, in other words, we planted those completely solid. We planted three pounds of them on this side, and then we took three pounds of potatoes, cut them, and put them on the other side. Mm -hmm. We yielded 13 pounds of, from the whole potatoes and 15 pounds from the cut potatoes. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a spider web on y'all. Oh. The uh, whole potatoes are definitely larger in size. There is more large potatoes like this. Yeah, versus on the cut side, there was a lot more of your small- Smaller potatoes. I mean, there's a few large ones, don't get huh. me wrong, you'll see it, there's a few of them, but definitely more in the this size Whereas this one, everything was, was like, pretty big. Pretty big. So I think in the future, I think I'm going to leave my potatoes whole still, simply because I like the larger potatoes. We can cut them up. If we're doing a crawfish boil or something like that, the smaller potatoes like this tend right. to be better. But I think it depends on what you want. Now, you know? at the same time, we did 13 pounds of potatoes on this side, 15 pounds of potatoes on that side. Mm -hmm. That being said, there was twice the real estate on Take that out. side and yes. i don't know if that is justifiable for uh, it, it's really something you're going to have to think about for your for, garden say, bed 15 percent, something like that i think is what and it is two more pounds yeah. um i don't know that's a lot more real estate if you're doing it on pounds. a large scale for two more pounds or yeah. like you said 15 percent more it depends on what you're doing with them if you've mm -hmm. only got one bed mm -hmm. yeah. i don't know i don't so, know it's a hard choice we're going to uh Get over to our cabbage mound, uh, our cabbage for a raised bed container for raised the cabbage, bed for, the for summertime straight. heat. Yeah, the cabbage, we'll, we'll, let's go over there real yep. quick. All right, so for our little bonus clip, I guess, here at the end, we mm -hmm. are going to finally harvest the, the last of our cabbage. You've um, probably heard us talk about it a little bit, like we're going to finally harvest it, we're going we're gonna to harvest them this week, and we're going to We've kind of let them go because they were still looking really healthy and they were still growing. Mm -hmm. So, But now we can tell that the heat is finally starting to take a toll on them. Mm -hmm. They're starting to kind of fall over. It's time to go ahead and harvest them, but we wanted you guys to see, and these are from the soil test. Yep, this is the early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. 
Mm -hmm. So we've got some really good heads. I think Amber's going to make some sauerkraut out I'm of this. I'm going to make sauerkraut out of this. So. Best way to, I think that's the best way careful, to. Uh, careful with the ladybug. I know that's why I was letting it plow. So, um, I think sauerkraut's the best way to preserve cabbage, cabbage. for long term. We, we've done can we've had canned cabbage in the past, which turned out quite well. As, right. So. But we're going to get these in the uh, preservation room mm -hmm. and get after it. We appreciate you guys following along for our videos mm -hmm. uh, it's harvest season and all of our hard work start finally starting to pay off finally starting to pay off so hey guys if y'all like our videos go ahead and subscribe to the channel if y'all like today's video leave, leave a like. like if you got any questions or comments leave them down below we'll make sure to get back with y'all in the meantime we'll see y'all next week we'll see you next week